Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from our channel Who Died Today America. In this video we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away in the last few days. Before we proceed we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 6. Aidan Canto, a gifted Mexican actor known for his dynamic roles in both film and television, passed away at the age of 42 on January 8th due to appendix cancer. His versatile talent and dedication to his craft left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Born on December 5, 1981, in Ciudad Acuna, Coahuila, Canto's artistic journey began early. He crossed into the United States daily to attend school in Texas and grew up immersed in the vibrant traditions of mariachi music and boleros. His passion for the arts was evident from the age of seven when he started performing as a singer a talent he nurtured through his teenage years. Canto's career transitioned from music to acting, and he quickly made his mark in the Mexican entertainment industry before moving to American television. His role as Paul Torres in the Fox drama series The Following in 2013 marked his U.S. television debut. He gained further recognition for his portrayal of Sunspot in the 2014 superhero film X-Men Days of Future Past. Canto's versatility as an actor was evident in his various roles, including his performances in Blood and Oil, Designated Survivor, and The Cleaning Lady. Beyond acting, Canto was also a talented filmmaker. He directed the short film Before Tomorrow in 2014 and The Shot in 2020, the latter earning several festival awards. His production company, Canto House Pictures, was a testament to his commitment to storytelling and his vision as a filmmaker. Canto's personal life was enriched by his marriage to sculptor and painter Stephanie Lindquist, with whom he collaborated artistically and shared two children. Their partnership both on and off the screen was a reflection of their shared creative spirit. Adam Canto's legacy is not only in the memorable characters he portrayed, but also in his contributions to the arts as a multifaceted artist. His work resonated with audiences across borders, and his influence in the entertainment industry will be long remembered. Number 5. Peter Crombie, passed away at the age of 71 January 13, leaves behind a legacy filled with memorable performances and a profound impact on those who knew him. Known for his portrayal of the quirky and intense Crazy Joe Davila on the iconic television series Seinfeld, Peter's character brought both humor and depth to the show, appearing in five episodes of the fourth season. His portrayal was so compelling that it remains etched in the memory of Seinfeld fans, highlighting his ability to bring complex characters to life. Beyond Seinfeld, Peter Crombie's diverse acting career spanned both television and film, showcasing his versatile talent. He appeared in notable movies such as My Dog Skip, Natural Born Killers, The Blob, Seven, and Rising Sun. His role in Born on the Fourth of July added yet another dimension to his expansive repertoire. Peter's presence on television was equally significant, with appearances on major shows including NYPD Blue, Walker, Texas Ranger, Diagnosis Murder, Law and & Order, and many more. His contribution to television was vast, with notable roles in the TV miniseries House of Frankenstein, and other guest-starring roles, amassing a total of 35 acting credits. Peter's ex-wife, Nadine Kiner, fondly remembers him as the kindest, most caring, giving, considerate man, a sentiment echoed by his friend Bill Stetz, who described him as a gentle and loyal friend of soft words and expressive work as an actor and a writer. This personal testament to his character speaks volumes about the man behind the roles, suggesting a depth of kindness and generosity that transcended his professional achievements. Though the details of his illness and passing remain unclear, what is evident is the indelible mark Peter Crombie left on the entertainment industry and the hearts of those who knew him. His departure from showbiz around 2000 did not diminish the impact of his work, which continues to resonate with audiences. Number 4. Ruth Ashton Taylor, a trailblazer in broadcast journalism, passed away at the age of 101. Her career, spanning several decades, broke new ground in an industry once dominated by men, 
and her legacy is a testament to her tenacity, skill, and pioneering spirit. Beginning her journey in Long Beach, Ruth Ashton Taylor quickly distinguished herself by joining CBS KSTL-TV in Los Angeles in 1951, becoming the first woman to have an on-air news role in the city. Refusing to be confined to traditional women's stories, Taylor applied solid journalistic principles to cover a broad range of topics, from cars and airplanes to fashion, always with a unique perspective that reflected the changing dynamics of society. Her dedication led her to produce and host the Women's News Desk program, syndicated across Western states, and later the Ruth Ashton Show on KNX, where she mixed news headlines and feature stories. Taylor's career was not without challenges. She left television in 1952, frustrated by sponsor pressures and the station's push towards lighter content. However, her commitment to journalism led her back to KNX Radio and eventually to KNXT TV, where she hosted various programs, including weekend newscasts and a newsmaker interview program. Taylor's academic pursuits at Scripps College and Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism laid the foundation for her remarkable career. Her time at CBS News, where she covered significant events like D-Day and the atomic bombings at the end of World War II, and her collaboration with Edward R. Murrow, highlighted her exceptional abilities. In her reflections, Taylor acknowledged the limitations for women in broadcasting during her early career, but never saw herself solely as a pioneer. Instead, she focused on excelling in her work and enjoying her journey. Her influence paved the way for future generations of women in journalism, a legacy that continues to inspire. Ruth Ashton Taylor's life was marked by her pioneering spirit, dedication to her craft, and the impact she left on the field of broadcast journalism. Number 3. Mel Blythe, a revered figure in the world of English football, passed away at the age of 79 on January 13th. His journey in football was marked by resilience, skill, and memorable performances, leaving an indelible mark on the sport. Blythe's career began at non-league Great Yarmouth, but it was at Scunthorpe United where he first made his mark in professional football. Despite facing the challenge of relegation with Scunthorpe, his talent was undeniable, leading to his transfer to Crystal Palace. At Palace, Blythe transformed into a formidable centre-back, playing a crucial role in the team's promotion to Division I. His memorable looping header against Manchester United in Palace's first division, one match is a testament to his skill and determination. His time at Crystal Palace was a testament to his resilience and adaptability, as he remained a vital part of the team's defense through challenging seasons. The tragic incident involving Tony Green of Newcastle United, although accidental, highlighted the intensity and commitment Blythe brought to every game. The pinnacle of Blythe's career came with his move to Southampton, where he was instrumental in their victorious 1976 FA Cup run. His effective partnership with Jim Steele was a cornerstone of the team's success. Blythe's impact at Southampton was such that he was voted the Supporters' Player of the Year in his first season, a clear indication of his influence on and off the pitch. After his time at Southampton, Blythe's career saw him play for various clubs, including a return to Crystal Palace, a stint with Cape Town City, and a final run with Millwall. His post-football life saw him channel his leadership and experience into roles outside of playing, including a driving instructor, running his own building firm, and contributing to Crystal Palace's Schoolboy Academy. Mel Blythe's legacy is not just in the goals he scored or the matches he won, but in the resilience, skill, and leadership he displayed throughout his career. His story is one of dedication, adaptability, and commitment to the sport he loved. Number 2. Pierre Melot, also known as Doc Melou or Dr. Melou, a Canadian psychiatrist and controversial radio show host, passed away on January 12th at the age of 74 in Trois-Rivières due to complications from a renal infection. His life and career were marked by a blend of significant contributions to psychiatry and a series of controversies in his public persona. Melou's professional journey began after studying medicine at Université Laval and psychiatry at McGill University. 
His work with the Canadian forces as a psychiatrist laid the foundation for his later role in working with assault offenders and serving as an expert witness in numerous trials. Notably, he was assigned to the Denny Lordy case, where he identified Lordy as having paranoid schizophrenia. This case was a critical point in his career, highlighting his expertise in psychiatric evaluations. In 1995, Melu embarked on a different path, starting a radio career with CKAC in Montreal. His show underwent several transformations, eventually becoming known as Doc Melu. However, his radio career was not without controversy. Melu was known for his blunt and often contentious on-air comments, which frequently sparked public and professional backlash. In 2002, he was reprimanded by the Collège des Médecins for making a diagnosis on air and providing inaccurate information about a drug. Melu's views on various topics, including criticism of feminists, often stirred debate. His tenure as an on-air psychiatrist for the reality show Loft Story and his appearances on various talk shows further cemented his controversial reputation. Despite these challenges, he authored several books, contributing to psychiatric literature. Pierre Melo's life was a complex tapestry of professional achievements and public controversies. His legacy in the fields of psychiatry and broadcasting will be remembered for its distinctiveness and the debates it sparked. Number 1. Edward J. Epstein, a distinguished American investigative journalist and a respected professor at prestigious institutions such as Harvard University, UCLA, and MIT, passed away from COVID-19 on January 9th at the age of 88. His life and work were characterized by a relentless pursuit of truth and an unwavering commitment to in-depth journalism. Born in New York City on December 6, 1935, Epstein's academic journey was remarkable, beginning with a bachelor's and master's in government from Cornell University, where he worked with the renowned writer Vladimir Nabokov. His quest for political truth led him to complete his PhD at Harvard University, transforming his master's thesis into a top-selling book. Epstein's career was marked by his insightful critique of significant historical events, notably the John F. Kennedy assassination. His book, Inquest, was a groundbreaking analysis of the Warren Commission's investigation, setting a high standard for investigative journalism. He continued to explore this topic with his later works, Counterplot and Legend, collectively known as The Assassination Chronicles. His investigative prowess was not limited to political events. In The Rise and Fall of Diamonds, Epstein exposed the diamond industry's economic impact in Southern Africa. His work, Have You Ever Tried to Sell a Diamond?, shed light on De Beers' marketing strategies, revealing the complexities behind the diamond trade. The Secret History of Armand Hammer was another significant contribution, unveiling the espionage activities of the businessman Armand Hammer in the 1920s and 1930s. Epstein's dedication to uncovering hidden truths was evident in his thorough research and compelling storytelling, 